Hello and welcome to section 9, Bayesian parameter estimation in Bayesian networks. So how to learn the parameters of a Bayesian network in the Bayesian estimation framework that we learned in the previous section? Well, we ended up with this result that if a categorical variable follows a pr Dirichlet prior, then of course its posterior will also be Dirichlet, but more importantly, its posterior mean and mode can be calculated using these simple formulas. So we can extend uh, the, the result to a CPD case where if the CPD of a Bayesian network follows a prior distribution, so it's categorical and it's following a prior distribution, P of theta of X condition on a realization of its parents is a Dirichlet, then the posterior will also be a Dirichlet, no surprise there, and also that the posterior mean and mode can be calculated in this way. The only difference is that here we have n of xk and its parents, and in the denominator its parents. This is just the MLE case. For the posterior mean, we have alpha hyperparameters, and for the MAP or the mode, we have the negative ones. So is that it? I'm done. I just do this and uh, it's over. Well, we just need to make sure that this posterior distribution of all of the variables, all of the parameters, so the joint distribution of the parameters is actually decomposable into such terms. Then I can maximize them separately and get, for example, MAP or calculate the averages. So I need to see if the global and local decompositions hold. Let's see. First, global parameter indepe independence. Back to our COVID mask problem, P of MC is written in the, the following form, P of C condition on M times P of M. And we have the unknown vector parameters. So for M, I will have theta of M0 and M1, denoted in the compact form by this bold theta of M. And for C of M, I have all four cases. We can form a Bayesian network for IID samples from this network with the parameters for N samples. So what I mean is that I can actually represent the relationship, the probabilistic relationships between the parameters and the network itself as an extended Bayesian network. And this is all because now we're treating theta as a random variable. This is how it will look like. Uh, you see, like, I'm repeating mass COVID, this simple Bayesian network, n times the number of my instances, and then the parameters are appearing here. And the parameters theta m and theta cm are independent from each other. There is no link between them, and here I have a V structure. So we have this. This representation implies the following independence, that each instance is independent of the other instances condition on the parameters. So for example, here I have that this instance is independent of this instance as long as I know the parameters th theta m. For example, m1 is independent of m2. I cannot get there because this one is observed, conditioned. Can I get from here, the bottom? Well, let's see, M1, I go to C1 here, I already have a V structure, so no. Doesn't work, so they are independent and we see that we managed to represent this IID condition. Okay, so this, the, the previous independence, theta M and theta CM, guides us to a parameter in this independence in the prior. Formalizing it, global parameter independence, consider a Bayesian network with parameters theta, a prior P of theta is, is said to satisfy global parameter independence if it, uh, the prior can be decomposed into these terms, local terms of P of theta xi condition on parents of xi. Just note that this is the general compact form of xi condition on its parents, so it includes all of these, C0 condition on M0 all the way to C1 condition on M1. 
Great, so I have this global parameter independence definition. What can I conclude about the posterior? Let's see back to our example. If MT and CT are observed for all T, so basically if all the data is observed, then the parameters will become independent. They are de-separated. So if I see all of these, if they're observed, they simply block the path. And the same, well here, if because they're restructured, then they don't block, but I, I have at least in one of them, and that suffices. So then I can write down the posterior, which is this term. Uh, I can decompose it into these two terms because they're independent of each other. Great. So the, this property is similar to the likelihood global decomposition in the MLE. In general, proposition. If the parameters of a Bayesian network satisfy the global parameter independence, then for a fully observed data set, the posterior will be decomposed in this form. Proof, well, I just wrote the definition of a posterior and we know that the likelihood can be decomposed in this way using the likelihood decomposition. And this one is where the global parameter independence play a role. Now you see that I can combine these two into a single probability and this just follows the definition of a conditional probability. Great, what about local parameter independence? Well, back to our COVID mask problem, we had this compact form representing all of these parameters. If we break it into these two parts, so I have the child node, all of the possibilities of the child node here, C0 and C1, conditioned on one realization of the parent, M1, and the same here, the other realization, M0. So if I break it into these two parts, and then I assume that they're independent, then what will happen is that I can have my Bayesian network representing the IID samples in this way. So you see it's the same as the previous one, just this time they appear separately. There is no link between them, and you can easily check that they are independent because now you see that uh, we have these V structures. Okay. So before making any conclusion about the posterior, just to formalize this assumption here, what does it imply? It just implies that the probability of the compact form here can be written as this probability mul uh, multiplied by the probability of the second one, by definition. In general, given the variable x in a Bayesian network, the prior satisfies local parameter independence if it can be decomposed into this form. The multiplication of these probabilities, which are the priors of the parameters corresponding to the CPD of X condition on a realization of its parents. So what can we conclude from this assumption? Well, we wanna make a conclusion on the posterior where, where the data is observed. In particular, if we look back our to, to our graph, we see that if all of these Cs are observed, then we don't have this V structure independence anymore. So all of these V structures will, will become inactive and the two of these parameters will become dependent on each other. So they are not de-separated. So is that it? Well, maybe they are context-specific independent. If you recall from the first chapter, this is something in addition to de-separation. You cannot see it by factorizing the joint probability distribution. It depends on the CPDs and the variables themselves. So in particular, I wanna see if any of these links in my V structure will become deactive. So for example, theta C condition on M1 can become independent of C of M. Let's see, so I calculate P of C condition on all the known variables uh, the thetas I'm including here because of the posterior, they are assumed to be known when calculating the posterior, and M is observed. So if I have this, you can see that this becomes really theta of C M0 if M is M0, right? So if I'm seeing M, 
And if I know that it's M0, well, this by definition will simply be theta of C condition on M0. I no longer need this. And if it's M1, then it's theta of C condition on M1. So by observing M, if MT is M0, then CT does not depend on this one, implying that the link between them is inactive and similarly for the other one. So for each of these instances, based on the value of M, either this link, theta C to uh, condition on M1, or the other links, theta of C condition on M0, will become inactive. And therefore, the whole V structure, it will become an active trail. And that means that I will basically have my independence. Okay? In general, proposition, if the pa parameters theta of a Bayesian network satisfy the global and local parameter independence, I'm combining the results of both of them, then for a completely observed data set or a complete data set, I have that the posterior can be decomposed into this form. So we can find the posterior mode for each parameter separately. And uh, here in par particular, we can also, for a Dirichlet distribution, we can calculate the mean. So again, in particular, if the uh, CPDs, each of these, um, the parameters follow a Dirichlet prior, then we have these values that we introduced in the beginning of this section. Okay, so I can calculate the MAP, the mode, and the mean. So if I know that my prior knowledge about the parameters satisfies this global and local independence, uh, then I can go on and update my parameters from the data set, find the optimum values or the average value, whatever I want to take as my learning procedure for my parameters. I can use this formula and do that. Okay, one last piece. What if the data set has missing values? What can we do in this case? Do the global and local independence hold? Let's start with the global parameter independence. We saw that if, in, in the COVID mask example, if everything is observed, then we had that theta M and theta C condition on M, they were deseparated. Because here we, we observe M and it's blocking the trail, right, for each of these instances. So we had global parameter independence. But when there is a missing value, then you see that this trail will become active, okay? No longer M1 is blocking it. So no longer theta M and theta C condition on M are independent and global parameter independence does not hold. As an exercise, you can see what happens if also this node is unobserved. Just a hint that then this means that the whole instance is not observed, so we may just ignore it. So global parameter independence does not hold in general. What about local independence? Well, we had this case. We know that at least one of these Cs are observed, okay, unless you have the special case that uh, it's a completely latent variable. And that means that the V structure from uh, if we have C of T, the structure, V structure from theta of C condition on M0 to that, in that value of C to theta of C condition on M1, then this V structure becomes active. So they are dependent on each other, no deseparation. We can also see that the con context specific independence is also violated if one of these empties are hidden. Because for that particular one, then we don't see that value of M and all that conclusion that, okay, if it's M0, then we don't care about this one and uh, vice versa, that is gone as well. So local parameter independence does not hold in the general case either. Okay, so wrapping up, should we always use the posterior to learn the parameters? Well, no, because calculating the corresponding integrals of the posterior mean or other posterior statistics can be complex for non-categorical variables. Okay, yes, we saw it for categorical variables. It was quite handy, but 
not in general. The situation becomes worse if we have partially observed data and if we have no idea about the prior. These, uh, this approach is almost the same as MLE with just this additional smoothing effect, uh, smoothening effect for the particular case of, um, for example, when we're using the uh, posterior mean, which can be done in MLE anyways. We just can add those imaginary ones to smoothen it. And at the end of the day, it also depends whether you're a frequentist or a Bayesian. So at the end, acknowledgement, thank you for your attention.